Welcome to the Destination Awards channel. Here we talk about the people, the places, the institutions and the experiences that make destinations special. In the upcoming videos, I'll be sharing highlights of our visit to Badagre, a town you must visit to understand Nigeria's deep, dark history of slavery and slave trade. Did you know that Badagre, a beautiful coastal town in southwest Nigeria, used to be a prominent port for the temporary detention and trade in slaves? We found out this and more on our visit to the beautiful historical town of Badagre. Our first part of call was the Mobi Royal Family Slave Relics Museum, Badagri, where we met Mr. Temitopo Mobi, a member of that family, who took us on a graphic, experiential, historical journey within this small but deeply significant family museum. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma. Good morning, sir. Yeah, welcome to Badagri. And this is the first museum in Nigeria, the Mobi Slave Relics Museum, established in the year 1889. That was a year after the abolition of slave trade. Badagri was known to be a slave corridor. Once again, you are welcome to Madagri. For now, my name is Temitokwe Mobi. I'm the curator. I'm the curator of the Mobi Slave Relics Museum. So you're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, thank sir. you for the brief history. So we yes, hope sir. to see everything. Yes, sir. No problem, right, sir. Thank you. So let's go. So you're welcome once again. Thank you. Um, this is the Mobi Family Slave Relics Museum. And here are the real chain chakus used on our forefathers during the period of slave trade. The chair here are over 500 years old. Because slave trade lasted here in Badagri for about 350 to 400 years. And like I said outside, Badagri was known to be a slave corridor. Whenever the white people come around, the, ma the father of the man buried there usually entertain the white men with kola nuts. The Yorubas call kola nut obi. So usually tell them Yoruba language, oyiboremi, emobije. The world is saying emobije because the man doesn't understand English. The white man doesn't understand Yoruba, so they gave him a nickname from there, Chief Mobi. And so the family adopts Mobi as a family name. Mobi is now a chieftain's title in Badagri of today. In the year 1888, Chief Sumbu Mobi waged war against the Portuguese slave merchant. He seized the last vessel living in Badagri. And these are the real chains he seized in the year 1888. He brought the chain to his compound, and when he died, they buried him closer to the chain. The man buried there was actually the one that established this museum in the year 1888. That was a year after the abolition of slave trade here in Badagri. This I'm holding is called the neck lock and this is for the neck of the slaves. Slaves were meant to walk with this around their neck for 18 hours every day. While traveling, this will be around them for three to four months before getting to their final destination. This is very heavy. Our forefathers were meant to walk with this around their neck for three to four months while traveling for 18 hours, walking inside the farm every day. Please, Marco. I don't, I really want to see <laughs> I'm very curious. Jesus, Jesus. Ma, for how long can you walk with I this? Can't, I can't, okay. I cannot imagine. Now, apart from the weight of the chain, do you feel anything on your body? Probably pain. Yes, it's painful at the back of my neck. Jesus. Now, our forefathers were meant to walk with this around your neck for 18 hours every day. So, you also want to try this on? I want to try it. All sure. right. Oh, no. No, oh, this is. This is crazy. This is like how many kgs? That is what I want to ask you. It's like 10 at least. How do you feel with the chain around your neck? Definitely depressed. Now, our forefathers were meant to walk with this inside the farm for 18 hours every day. You are here in Badagri. I'm sure you've seen what our forefather went through yeah. during the period of slave trade. Yeah. So they call this a neck lock for the neck of the slaves. Mm. Now, there were two categories of slaves back then. They have slaves working in the house and they have slaves working in the farm. Those working in the house are called domestic slaves, male, female. Most of the time, the male domestic slaves were usually castrated. The castrating for them not to be able to impregnate the wife or children of the master. Or for them to become very big, huge, and tall. So that whenever they are going for war, they will be at the war front. Whenever they need to carry heavy objects, that is when you see the plantation the domestic slaves coming out, male slaves. The female domestic slaves were used as wet nurse. The white men will not want the breast of their wife to lose shape. So they don't allow their wife to breastfeed. Once they decide that their wife is pregnant, they impregnate the black woman working with them in the house. And the black woman 
will be the one to breastfeed the child of the master. Most of the time, they kill the baby of the black woman or collect the baby from the woman and give the baby to another woman breastfeeding inside the farm. Now for the babies of the slaves working in the farm not to be playing about the farm, for them not to be able to kill the plant or put the plant or step on the plant, they gather the children together. They chain their wrists, three, four of them. They chain their wrists with the size of the chain. Make them sit down under a tree, far away from where their parents are working. So this is called the light chain for the babies of the slaves. And this is called the mouth clip. The slaves working inside the farm, both male and female, were usually not allowed to communicate while working inside the plantation. Why? The white men are afraid. They are afraid that white slaves are working and they are communicating. They can plan on how to attack them. For that not to happen, they usually pierce their lips with hot iron, the lower and the upper lips. Why going to the farm in the morning? They put this on the mouth. And they do what? They padlock their mouths like this. For them not to talk. Another reason why they do this is for them not to be able to eat. You can imagine slaves working in the sugarcane plantation or tobacco plantation and they are eating sugarcane every day. Before the harvesting period, they will have finished the whole plantation. So for them not to eat, they also padlock their mouth. So this is called the mouth clip for the mouth of the slaves. And this is a torture weapon, the wrist lock. This was used in punishing stubborn slaves who refused to work inside the farm. Slaves who disobey his master, they force this into their hand down to the wrist. Most time, this doesn't go in easily. They will have to break the bone to force this to the wrist. After forcing this to the wrist of the slave, they made him climb a platform. They screw this up to a tall tree. The slaves will now be hanged on the tree, dingling from morning to night. In the course of doing this, most of them die. The white man doesn't care because our forefathers were used in nursing of high times. And this is called a branding iron. And this was used in writing names on slaves. During the period of slave trade, slaves don't bear name. They bear the name of their master or any name given to them by the white men. For the white men to be able to identify their slaves, they usually write their name on their body, either on the chest or at the back of the slaves. And this was the reason why today in Lagos, in Abelkuta, you will come across some Yorubas with English surname. Their, name, their name doesn't sound like a Yoruba name. You hear names like Smith, Cole, Coca, they return back after the abolition of slave trade. Originally, they are, they are not from Lagos, but because they don't know where they captured their forefathers from, they have to settle down in Lagos. So, for the white men to be able to identify their slaves, for them to be able to differentiate their slaves from one another, they pull this in fire. When this is red hot, they use this to write the name of the master on the body of the slaves. And this is what we now adopt as fashion. We call that tattoo. The second function of this is to pierce the lips of the slaves. So as to be able to padlock their mouths. The last function of this is to pierce the foot of stubborn slaves who try to run away being captured. When this is red hot, they hit this into the foot of the slaves to pierce the foot or break the bone inside the leg. So they call this branding iron or bone breaker. If you have watched a film called The Roots, you understand what we are talking about better. And this is called the hanko lock. This is for the leg of two slaves. Two slaves were meant to share this around their hanko and they walk together with this around their leg at the same time. And you can imagine this on the leg of two human beings. They have to drag their feet on the floor. Can we this try was, to, yes, can we try please come closer, sir. Sorry, excuse me. It will be very difficult for them to walk yes. with this around their hanko. And so this was the money we recognized back then in Africa, carols. But this was only recognized as misoffense in Africa. The white man doesn't see this as money. That led to the introduction of trade by butter. So items were brought into Africa in exchange of human being. Items like gone, gunpowder, dry gin, cotton, iron, mirror, tobacco, plate, spoon, matches, and so on and so forth. Back then, a box of matches was in essence of between three to four human beings. 
before the arrival of the white men, before one our box. forefather could make fire then, one they box. have to get two stone, they strike together, before they, it can take them 30 minutes before they could make fire. So when they brought matches to them, it was like a magic to our forefathers. Before the arrival of the white men, we have our local gin, we have palm wine. Palm wine is natural, but the white men introduced dry gin to us for 10 human beings. So back then, a bottle of dry gin was in essence of 10 human beings. And umbrella was in essence of 40 human beings. And who are those that need umbrella? The king and the wealthy people. So because of an umbrella, you have to wage war against smaller community, capture slaves, bring them down to Badagri because of an umbrella. Here's a cannon gun. And this size of the cannon gun was in essence of 40 human beings. Why do we need this? They brought this road so that we could wage war against ourselves capture slaves and sell back to the white men. I call that divide and conquer. The white men are still doing this in Africa up to date. They create problems among we Africans. While we are busy fighting ourselves, they take away our natural resources. So this small size of the cannon gun was destined for 40 slaves, the big size of this for 100 human beings. If you have this then, you will need cannonball and you will also need gunpowder. The cannonballs and the gunpowder will also be in essence of more slaves. And here, is a slave drinking water, uh, water bowl. 40 to 50 slaves were meant to drink from this pot. And they drink from the pot once in a day. They drink with their hand being tied to the pack. Because they know they have access to food and water once in a day, they struggle to drink from the pot. And so they push one another. They get caught by the edge of the pot. The blood drips into the water. The slaves have no choice. They drink the blood water like that because they have access to food and water once in a day. This is a picture of the well at the point of no return. Now we have this here because we are not going to see the recitation when we get to the point of no return. Slaves were forced to drink from this well and they were forced to make this recitation. They call it spirit attenuation well. The recitation goes thus. I am leaving this land. My spirit lives with me. I shall not come back now. My shackles do not break. It is the shackles that hold the ship down. My ancestors bear me witness, I shall not return. This land shall depart, my soul do not revolt. My spirit goes along with me, I depart to the land unknown, I shall not return. After drinking from the well and saying all this, they become less aggressive, they lose their memory. This was the reason why Nigeria was the largest supplier of slaves during the period of slave trade. Nigeria accounted for about 24% of slaves taken out of Africa. And that was the highest, and Angola. Nigeria 24, Angola 24. Ghana 16%, Senegambia 13%. About 38.5% of slaves taken out of Africa were taken down to Brazil. And that was the reason why today all of our culture in Yoruba land are still practiced in Brazil. Yoruba that we speak in Nigeria is their second official language in Brazil because majority of slaves taken by the Portuguese were taken to work on their plantation in Brazil. These are royal musical instruments because the Mobi family is a royal family. It's the reason why we have this here. They call this a jogon in Badagri. And this belongs to the royal family. Whenever we have special program, the wife of the royal family play this instrument to entertain the family. So they play it like this. And if you bring out the gongs together, it's going to bring out different sound. So by the time they combine the, all the sound together, it brings out a good melodious sound. So while some are playing this, some play this, dance to the rhythm of the instrument. And we still maintain this up till date. There were so many things to see at the Mobi Family Museum that told of the history of slave trade. It was a somber yet necessary experience. We headed from there to the Brazilian Barracoon where we made more shocking discoveries. You can see more about this on our next video. We recommend that you schedule a visit to Badagri at a time when you're driving against traffic, preferably in the morning. We also recommend that you plan the whole day as there's so much to see and so much history to soak up. Our trip was made possible through our partnership with Atelier Concierge a foremost concern that assists to the security, the ease, the comfort and leisure of travelers within Nigeria. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for our next video as we share other interesting, shocking discoveries about the Asian significant town of Badagri.
do not forget to like subscribe and share our videos and do not miss the next video as well